Welcome back, everybody. Two formerly extinct animals have been spotted in the environs surrounding Washington, D.C. One of them is called bipartisanship. The other one is called Congress actually doing something. Both of these unprecedented occurrences come in the name of regulating the big five tech companies. We're probably going to see some antitrust legislation coming out of Congress. Miracle of miracles. As always, this is not legal advice. Go ahead, drop a like, subscribe, comment. Let me know if there's something else that you want to see. Let's get started. So we've got four areas today. First, we're gonna talk about who's in the crosshairs. Second, we're gonna talk very briefly about what antitrust law prohibits. We won't get into too much detail. You could spend an entire career, let alone an entire YouTube video talking about antitrust. Third, we're gonna talk a little bit about the history of these guys, because this is not the first time that any of them have been in trouble. And fourth, we're gonna make a couple of very broad predictions about what might happen here. Now, for our first topic, who's in trouble here? Who's in the crosshairs? Well, it's the so-called big five mainly, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook. So these companies, I'm betting that you have at least a couple of products from at least a couple of those guys. Maybe you're watching this on a product made by one of those guys. They have their fingers in many pies worldwide, all kinds of different countries, all kinds of different sectors, and that is sort of the problem. Now you have a bipartisan effort that the left has always been suspicious of big business, and the right now feels that a lot of these internet companies are suppressing conservative speech. As a result, you have this kind of strange bedfellows bipartisanship where both sides of the aisle believe that these companies ought to be regulated for drastically different reasons. For our second area, we're going to talk about very, very summary level. What does antitrust law prohibit? Now, forgive me if this is perhaps less than completely comprehensive. You could spend an entire career studying antitrust law, and many people do. But the basic idea is that things that restrain trade are illegal, right? Contract, combinations, conspiracies, and restraint of trade mergers or combinations that lessen competition. So there's three basic statutes that you're concerned about when you're talking about antitrust law. You're talking about the Clayton Act, the Sherman Act, and the FTC Act. Now, those are all broad and expansive. So I'm going to give you a few examples of things that you maybe can't do, and we'll bleed in a little bit to the history, which is what we'll talk about next. So if you and I own shops on uh, the four corners of an intersection, and those are the only shops in the city, it would be illegal for us to all get together and say, hey, let's charge X dollars for the widgets that we sell so that consumers don't have a choice and they have to pay the higher price. That's illegal. This is based on the fundamental economic idea that competition sets prices at an efficient level. And you could draw a supply curve and demand curve and do the whole economics thing. But essentially, Firms competing with each other and businesses competing with each other based on the laws of supply and demand tend to create the best economic outcome for consumers, meaning the best price, it's the best quality, et cetera, et cetera. A restraint of trade, be it by some sort of conspiracy, be it by some sort of agreement among firms, whatever, is illegal. Moreover, you're not permitted to use your monopoly power in one area of the market to go unfairly compete and suppress competition in another area of the market. This brings up two points. First, a lot of people are under the mistaken impression that monopolies are always, under all circumstances, per se illegal. That's not the case. A monopoly that you've achieved by being the best product rather than unfairly stamping out your competition, a monopoly that you've achieved on the field of battle in the free market instead of consolidating the industry around you, that's okay. What you can't do is that unfair competition, suppression, unfair consolidation, etc., etc. The second point to make here is that this should remind you of the Microsoft antitrust lawsuit in the 90s. So we'll use this to pivot to our kind of third big area, which is what are the history around some of these guys? Well, we'll start with Microsoft. So back in the 90s, Microsoft Windows was, and to a large extent still is, the operating system of choice for businesses around the world, virtually every single business computer, as well as a pretty significant majority of personal computers, they all run Windows. Well. That was a legitimate monopoly. Microsoft had achieved that by being the best product on the market. Windows was better than everything else. Well, Microsoft took that and they hooked their web browser into it, Internet Explorer, 
to unfairly compete out, I believe at the time it was Netscape Navigator, but they used that to unfairly promote their web browser, which at the time wasn't very good, and you could make that case today as well, I suppose. That's neither here nor there. They took a thing that they were super dominant at, rightfully so, Windows, and used that to lift up another product that couldn't really compete on its own in the market. But that's far from the only antitrust history of the big five. Amazon was very recently sued by the Attorney General of Washington, D.C. for allegedly colluding with certain third-party sellers to fix prices in an anti-competitive way. In addition, Apple is currently involved in an antitrust lawsuit with the publisher of the massively popular video game Fortnite. The publisher argues that Apple engages in anti-competitive practices by requiring all publishers to exclusively go through its app store and prohibiting any sort of end runs around that, which Apple makes a 30% commission on. That's significant. The final arguments in that case were held in May, and we're expecting a verdict probably in the next few months. Apple's App Store is also the subject of a currently pending antitrust lawsuit by the European Union. Should the US decide to regulate Apple under anti-competitive antitrust provisions, they won't be alone. The EU has already gone there. Facebook is under fire for all kinds of things, not least of which includes Mark Zuckerberg sitting in front of Congress to answer questions about this whole Cambridge Analytica scandal and promising to make a whole lot of changes that may or may not have been implemented, as well as probably a lot of the GDPR was inspired by Facebook's data collection practices. But that misconduct is not Facebook's current issue. Currently, the regulators are pissed about Facebook's acquisition of WhatsApp and Instagram in an alleged bid to knock off its competition. That sort of industry consolidation is exactly the type of thing that the antitrust laws are designed to prohibit. Last thing I'll say about Facebook is you may have noticed some of the advertising campaign that they've been doing trying to promote a nationwide new set of privacy laws. Well, probably a lot of that comes in response to the California CCPA, the California Consumer Privacy Act, which regulates data in a very similar way to the European GDPR. Well, that strikes at the heart of Facebook's business model, which is essentially selling people's private data, and a national regulation would be, let's say, more susceptible to lobbyists. The last stop on our brief history tour is Google. YouTube, which is owned by Google, was slapped by the FTC in 2019 for $170 million for violation of COPPA, the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. Moreover, in October of 2020, the Justice Department and 11 states sued Google over antitrust concerns, alleging that its monopolization of search made it very difficult for other companies to compete. In this context, note that Google pays Apple billions of dollars every year to be the default search option on its devices. Our fourth and final topic today is what's actually going to happen here. Well, if we know anything about what happens when tremendously powerful companies bump up against Congress, regulatory capture is a real thing. And there's a reason that Facebook has been lobbying for nationwide privacy regulations. On the other hand, the new bipartisanship that we have somehow discovered roaming the environs of Washington, D.C. is such a rare bird that something might actually come of this, and so many actions have been taken abroad by other jurisdictions, including the EU and others, that you may actually see some meaningful regulation here. Stay tuned for more analysis on what that regulation may mean for your business, since a lot of us do get touched by several of these companies in terms of marketing efforts and so forth. Uh, Google and Facebook, please don't raise the cost of my ads for saying that. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.